It's the e-commerce master plan podcast here to help you solve your marketing problems and grow your e-commerce business. Cutting through the hype to bring you inspiration and advice from the e-commerce sector and beyond. Here's your host, Chloe Thomas. Hello and welcome to our latest podcast. I'm Chloe and it's awesome to have you out there listening. We're going to be looking at a bit of a curveball, I suppose, in the world of e-commerce. I know for many of us, one website is enough, but often one website is not enough. And there are really good reasons to be having multiple websites, but also lots of ways in which we should be um, going about doing that in order to make it as easy as possible for us to save some of the duplication of tasks and to make sure it's worth the while of setting up that extra site. So that's what we're going to be discussing in today's episode. Before we get into that, though, without the sponsors, the podcast wouldn't be possible. So please do check them out. This episode is brought to you by SendPro Online from Pitney Bowes. Save time and money no matter what you ship or mail with the SendPro Online software. Print shipping labels and stamps right from your desk and access discounted rates for as low as $4.99 per month. Try it free for 30 days and get a free £10 scale when you visit pb.com forward slash masterplan. That's pb.com slash masterplan. This episode is brought to you by the world's first pay-as-you-grow e-commerce platform, ShopIt. Supporting online sellers of every size, ShopIt gives every customer every feature they need to run an e-commerce business from day one, irrespective of their turnover. You can grow your empire with multiple websites, full inventory management and more, all from one central login. What's more, you only pay for usage, so you can focus your budgets on your growth marketing. Plus, there's a lifetime low 1.6% payment gateway rate for everyone. Shop it really do support growing businesses. Sign up for your free trial now at shopitcommerce.com forward slash masterplan. And now to introduce today's guest expert. Adam Pritchard is the founder of ShopIt, the UK's only pay-as-you-grow e-commerce platform. I've known Adam for a few years, and when we caught up for coffee at IRX this year, that's the Internet Retailing Expo in Birmingham, we ended up talking about all the many, many reasons a retailer could benefit from having multiple websites. It was such an interesting discussion and one that I don't think we hear a lot about that I thought we should recreate it for all of you. So that's what Adam's joining me today to discuss in the episode all the many reasons you might want to consider having multiple websites and how to go about doing it successfully. Okay. Hello, Adam. Hello, Chloe. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Looking forward to uh, to, well, to trying to see if we can make this discussion as good as we did it at IRX the first time around, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> uh, but before we get into talking multi-site, um, how did you get started in e-commerce? Just tell our listeners a little bit about your backstory, please. Well, all oh, right. Okay. So you're going to make me feel a little bit old now. So um, the kind of start of my proper career was the early 2000s. And I worked for uh, a few big companies. Um, and I think being the, the young guy in the office, being the computer kind of geeky guy, I suppose, um, I was always the go-to for um, what well, anything to do with computers. And I, I was asked to do develop a lot of processes um, a lot of systems, um, some software and spreadsheets and all that kind of stuff uh, to really help support uh, sales teams out on the road. And, and uh, that led me to a few web projects. Um, and yeah, I, you know, I always was telling my bosses that the systems were there to try and help people. So they got me involved in that. Cool. And how did that lead you to get involved in the world of, of multi site then? Because I, I know a lot of our listeners are thinking, why on earth would you want to have to run more than one of these? So how did you end up getting so deeply into it when, when it's something which so many retailers avoid? I, I, I mean, from the, that time, I started working at a big agency and um, we worked with a lot of big customers like Tesco and National Ties and all these kind of people. But I um, led the division for the small businesses. And even back then, I was always listening very carefully to what their issues were. Um, everybody that's in business, um, uh, well, that's a lot of people that are in business are ambitious, um, and the time and budgets are always limited, especially more so down at the uh, the smaller end. And this is where it came about to, to, to get to shop it and what started to manifest itself in our business model. Um, multi-site is a strategy that really relates back to um, a book that I read uh, in 2007, I'm going to say. Um, so it's a quite an old book by uh, Chris Anderson, the former editor of Wired. Um, 
And Chris wrote about the long tail of optimization, something very familiar to, to SEO people, which I've been heavily involved in as well over the years. Um, and what it basically boiled down to was the amount of people that were using um, Google. Um, I think the last stats from last year was something like 730 trillion searches on Google a year, which is a mind-blowing number when you actually go into it. Um, and what the likes of Amazon did was to, all they did really was to build web pages to map those searches. They didn't have any products, they didn't have any warehouses, and they obviously, as soon as they got orders, they started to quickly run around and try and find all these willing suppliers to fulfill that. Now, the way the industry's gone over the last um, 10, 15 years is obviously Amazon's now become a 200 billion pound company because they got their strategy right in the very first place. Um, what, uh, what Shop is trying to do is to, to level that playing field. Um, I've always been a bit of a champion of the smaller businesses, um, a champion of systems as well and processes to try and get people um, selling more and growing and, and really living their dreams. So uh, multi-site is, uh, is not that difficult to do. When I first open conversations with people um, about this, they are scared that they've got one website and that gives them a day job. If they're going to have two, three, four websites, they're going to be working two, three, four times um, longer and harder, but it, it, that's not the case. So Adam, with all your kind of years of experience of getting involved with, with multi-site retailers, it, what, what are the what are kind of like the reasons why retailers would go, would go multi-site? Because I know a lot are quite scared of it. So we've got kind of the obvious one of going international, but what other, what other reasons might we have for needing and wanting and benefiting from having multiple sites in our businesses? I think the opportunities for clients um, to go international, to uh, sell into the wholesale chain as well as into the retail chain um, are, are huge and, uh, and persuasive in their numbers. Um, as we touched on, the, the fear is that the work is going to increase massively, but when it comes to web development, um, creating web pages, uh, websites even, is, is really the easy part of the job. Um, the e-commerce businesses that, that I've encountered over the years, you realize when you get into it that probably 70% of the business is really the back-end stuff. It's the warehousing, it's the, uh, the payment processes, it's your staff, it's where you're buying your stock from, all those different things. Um, and actually the front-end kind of... Um, sales and marketing of it, absolutely essential and important, don't get me wrong, but it's really the, the kind of the final stretch. Um, I think a lot of people have got into e-commerce um, because of you know, the designs of websites and, and the, the photography that goes around it. And like I said, it's all very, very important, but an e-commerce business really um, is a warehouse, or if you drop shipping, it's someone else's warehouse that you're, you're tagging onto. I guess we're really straying here into kind of like how the complexities of successfully doing multi-site. So let's shift into that and we'll come back to some of the examples of why people might, might want to do multi-site later. So you're saying that it's, you know, what we're doing really is we're trying to get product into the hands of the right customer, which is the warehousing part and then that, that marketing part. So I'm, I'm guessing that if we're going to go multi-site, what we don't want to do is to have one site with one agency, one site done in-house, another site on another platform and something else that our brother-in-law made on Sunday. Um, so how do we go about making it as streamlined as possible so as we can spend our time not redoing things and not redoing the same thing on 20 sites, but making it, giving us the time to actually spend on the, the activities which matter? How can we make that easier? As I say, the, the, the side of the web development um, is all, can almost be a copy and paste um, uh, process. If you're, if you're a shoe manufacturer, for example, or a shoe wholesaler, retailer, whichever, um, you can absolutely create a single website that has um, all of the possible shoes going. And that's what Amazon's done with the, 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 the Globe's full product range that's available. Um, but there is also a great opportunity um, in the niches areas as well. So to break out a website that is sportsshoes.com or uh, workshoes.com, femaleshoes.com, um, SteveShoes.com, all these different kind of things because what you're actually doing is what Amazon did 10, 15 years ago, which is you're building a customer experience specifically for that demographic, thereby not only giving yourself an opportunity to, to create a strong brand in that area, um, but you're answering their, um, their query exactly. That's exactly what Google's been about um, over its own development. It's trying to match um, 
the first 10 websites, whatever it is, uh, to a specific query and understand the customer intent of whether they're buying um, particular things or whether they're just browsing particular things. And a multi-site strategy, whilst you're selling still the same pair of red trainers, if you like, um, out of your warehouse, you could actually be selling it across multiple websites to you know, a, a website that's targeted at skaters or a website that's targeted at um, the more casual market, the website that's targeted at, um, I don't know, parents or something. It's, it's the same product. It's just going out via a different door of the warehouse, really. So I guess to make that easy, then the idea would be to have all our sites feeding off the same product database and integrating into the same stock database and the same pick, pack and dispatch? Yes, yes. And that mirrors then, uh, well, you've kind of reversed the process that a lot of clients and and friends I've spoken to run their business. They start off with the website and then they actually start going backwards to source the stock. They start integrating all these different uh, stock management systems and accountancy systems to work out their profitability and all that kind of thing, um, which is fine and, and, and done. But there are many two, three, four, five million pound businesses out there who look like they're doing a fantastic um, job of selling. But behind the scenes and behind that warehouse door, they're all over the place. Um, when they start implementing those um, those stock management systems, and image systems, um, you start to realize that that's what they're really about and that's where they should start off um, before then adopting a multi-site sales strategy. Yeah, because if you've got that bit at the back not working, then you'd run yourself open to the problem of selling a product on two sites at the same time, which you only have one of and you don't know because you only do updates, you know, stock updates at half midnight or something. Or I suppose you also run into the, the problem of you've, you know, you've got one of the sizes wrong on the SKU number or something, and then you've got to manually go and change it on everything. So having that integrated back end is going to be essential, isn't it? Again, I mean, the database itself mirrors the web, the, the warehouse. You know, there is there is a product line. Um, yes, you might have slightly different labels to, for, the, for the warehouse to send it out onto, you know, redshoes.com, skateshoes.com, etc. There is a bit of stuff that needs to, needs to change, but the management needs to be centralized and can be. And that's, like I said, the thing that people tend to learn later on in their experience rather than appreciating that that's what an e-commerce business is from day one. Um, the rest is just a little bit of work and, and out you pop. You've got now four different demographics, five different demographics, different languages, etc. that you can be opening those products out to. Okay, let's talk about um, opening the products out to those demographics then because we've I think we've established at the back end you need it all in one place. Otherwise, you're in you're in serious trouble. Um, but on the on the front end of it, as I mentioned, um, you mentioned the long tail earlier. And unfortunately, the days where Chris Anderson wrote the book are kind of long gone where you could put up a website and rank within a couple of days. So so there's there's still work to be done getting the traffic and, and targeting that specific consumer. So what are the you know, if someone out there who's listening has, maybe they've got a shoe shop and they're going, oh my gosh, yes, the one focused on X that Adam just mentioned would be perfect for me. And they they get it live in the next week or so. What are the first things they should do to start actually getting people to it? You're quite right. Marketing is, is still applies to all of these multiple sites. You'll find that um, that shoe shop, um, they will have their leading lines that they that seem to sell and ones that don't shift. So again, that's why we'd say, well, have your supermarket website that sells everything, but then have the demographic, uh, the smaller sites as well, so that with the idea that maybe you can rank number one with your supermarket site and then number two with your, your more niche website for skater shoes, uh, in search term. Um, but yes, there is still a marketing job to do. Um, there are, there's so much available now in terms of getting your products out there. SEO is a huge um, background for me. And yes, it doesn't take uh, it, it doesn't take days to to get ranked. Um, it actually can take you know weeks or months. Obviously, when you start going a bit more to the long tail, it becomes a little bit easier than just trying to to rank for the word shoes um, because you're targeting something specific. But yeah, there's loads of other tactics. Um, once you're acquiring customers, obviously email marketing and retargeting can be huge. Um, paid ads can be expensive, but in the niche, it's going to be cheaper. Um, your social marketing and your adverts that they do, they still offer the greatest value um, out there. So you can start allocating your budgets in smaller sections, really, 
from a design point of view, if you're selling a, a pair of red shoes to some skaters versus to some parents, the chances are they're not going to see those two websites. So in terms of the differences in design work, um, it doesn't have to be groundbreaking and, and highly expensive. Um, it just has to be there and answer that customer's query. It's kind of doing similar things we do on the main site, but for that smaller site. So we've got to put a little bit of marketing effort in. Do we need to go as far as duplicating social media profiles? Um, or do we need to go as far as having differently branded email marketing? Is there, you know, Does this then duplicate in our different marketing channels? Or, or is there a level at which we can get away with using the central Facebook page to promote all of it? I think there is a certain amount of duplication that is required. However, depending on who you're targeting, should be your choice of mediums, really. So if you're selling B2B wholesale, um, throwing up uh, Facebook advertising is probably not the best use of time. Um, email campaigns could be better. Um, yeah, SEO uh, paid clicks can be better. Um, if you're then targeting perhaps the more younger demographic or just the more um, socially savvy, you, know, you are selling a pair of shoes, it's about the look and feel of them, then, um, then yeah, your social channels and your Facebook channels um, uh, need to be done in duplication. However, the setup of doing those kind of things is is small, really. Um, you've got to justify it with the sales that are coming in. But there are certain platform, there are certain software things like um, Buffer is one that uh, that we use, um, and that is a wonderful tool for sending one post out across multiple platforms. Then you'd send a slightly different post out across multiple platforms for your second or third multi-site you know, business. So yes, the marketing still has to be done, but there are ways to aggregate the effort of that and the software is out there. And I suppose there's also the fact that there is the different types of additional sites have some level of determination of whether or not you need to do thing do things differently in terms of the marketing and the different profiles. But also the fact that you know if it is that you have a, a fairly straightforward shoe site and you're creating one for the skater for the skater community, then you probably do need a separate Facebook page for that. But if you're starting off by I don't know expanding from the from the USA into the UK, you can probably get away with the same um, social media accounts, certainly initially, until that separate country and marketplace takes off. And I think you can probably do it even if there's different languages involved. Absolutely. And and look, I'm not multi-site is not a um, I mean it's, it's a relatively quick setup to do because like I say you've got your products and your database and your warehouse already um, perfectly organized. The actual success of that, it is a bit more of a, you know, a medium term thing. It, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, there, are, there are a million blog posts on, on how fast you can get, uh, you can acquire traffic from, from Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. But then you have to raise the questions about um, the, the conversion rates from all those um, systems and platforms. And that's whether you're, again, speaking to your audience correctly. If you're delivering the same message to multiple audiences and it's only working in one or two, then yes, you need to, to differentiate that message for your second and third audience. But yeah, you're quite right when it comes to international languages, certainly when it comes to English-speaking countries, the same or similar messages can be easily sent out um, to completely different, different demographics with tiny changes in work. Um, a lot of them, it might be a, a change in a logo. Um, it might be a change in one or two words. Um, those things, like I said, they can be aggregated quite easily. And I suppose one of the big benefits is if you're sat there thinking, gosh, I bet our shoes would work on Instagram and you've never touched Instagram with a barge pole, you could start off with an Instagram profile that's, that targets one of those niche customer groups and uses one of those niche sites, which enables you to test it and learn in a quieter place than your full on main brand. So you can test things with one and then roll them out as they work. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can do that with, uh, from the site point of view, you can do that with um, your pricing as well. You know, you might want, you might have bought a, a product in from uh, from a, a manufacturer and you think there are two or three different price points for that. According to the demographic, parents might pay a little bit more than a 22-year-old would do. Um, so you can try all those different techniques out. And when it comes to things like um, the social media advertising, which is a big part of our lives nowadays, um, the prices are still ridiculously low. You could spend £10 on an Instagram advert for a pair of high heels or shoes or whatever, um, and you're gaining some really interesting data from it and seeing what works. Okay, so we've we've explored 
the importance of getting the back end streamlined so as it makes it easy to do the, the additional site. We've talked about how to then get traffic to them and make it work. I guess the bit we've not really talked about is why you might want to do a multiple site in the first place. And what it strikes me from our discussion thus far is that it's it's really focused on is there a customer niche or niche for our American view listeners, in case you're wondering what on earth we're talking about this niche, niche thing. Um, <laughs> is there a customer niche, a customer demographic, which we feel could be better served by a website? It strikes me that that, that is at the heart of why go multi-site. Yes, absolutely. Um, it goes back to that point that the same, the same pair of shoes, the same hat, the same top can be sold to different people and it has to be sold in a slightly different way. Um, and it goes back to your search engine results that um, with the exception of some massive players like your ASOSes and your, your Amazons, which are go-to places, a lot of the other businesses, the other 98% of businesses that are out there are fighting over search terms. And um, the niches, the niches um, are, are a way to do that. Um, if I search for 10 different things that I need for my house, I'm probably going to end up on 10 different websites. The fact that, that those 10 different websites could potentially be owned by one company I need never know, but that one company is still getting all of my my money and all of my um, my, my customer loyalty um, to them. Really. So, does this whole um, process of deciding whether or not multiple sites is for you start really by analysing the existing customer database? Yes, um, yeah. analysing your product database, analysing your customers database, um, and obviously it does boil down to, to ambition. Um, multi-site is easier nowadays than uh, it ever has been before. Um, but if you're an entrepreneurial type of person, you want to see growth in your company, both financially and impact. I think that's for a lot of people. A lot of people want to take pride in their business um, and how it's grown. Um, and obviously, there are, there are greater economies of scale um, and returns to that financial growth. Um, from, from growing your staffing levels and all sorts of different things, really. So, um, like I say, it's not, multi-site is not an easy go-to, but it's a lot easier than it certainly used to be. E-commerce master plan is supported by some of the greatest companies in the e-commerce sector. Here's a reminder of who they are. Don't waste any more time waiting in line to send mail and packages. With Sempro Online from Pitney Bowes, you can send packages and mail without leaving your office for as low as $4.99 per month. And because you're an e-commerce master plan listener, you'll receive a free 30-day trial to get started, plus a free £10 scale shipped right to your door to help you accurately weigh your packages. Save time and money no matter what you send with this new offer for Send Pro Online. Starting at only $4.99 per month. You can print shipping labels and stamps from your own printer, easily compare rates using the online software, gain access to special USPS savings for letters and priority mail shipping, plus track all of your shipments and get email notifications when they have arrived. Go to pb.com forward slash master plan to access this special offer. Get a free 30 day trial and a free £10 scale to get started. That's pb.com slash master plan. Experience the better way to ship with a free trial of Send Pro Online from Pitney Bowes. If you want the best opportunity to scale your growing online business without needing to always upgrade or pay for costly plugins, then ShopIt is the answer. The world's first pay-as-you-grow e-commerce platform has no upfront costs, can support a multi-channel strategy and helps you focus your money on driving traffic and sales, which is why you started a business in the first place. On average, ShopIt clients pay just 0.5% of their turnover for next generation tech, meaning you can be selling while you're sleeping. ShopIt believes in equal opportunities and making it easier for you to be a success. Get your free trial now at shopitcommerce.com forward slash master plan. It's time for the top tips round. I love the top tip section because it gives me and all of you out there listening some really good ideas for taking our businesses to the next level. So, Adam, are you ready for the top tips? Now, I know you're a regular listener to the show, so I'm hoping for some good things here. No pressure. Okay, the book top tip. If everyone listening to this podcast agreed to take Friday off and read a book to make their business better, which book would you recommend? So, I've thought long and hard about this. I've obviously mentioned one already uh, with Chris Anderson's The Long Tail. Um, it, 
it kind of is at the point of where the internet started exploding and I think people do need to um, understand that the, the methodologies and the reasons behind that but right now the, the most influential book on me and my life over the last few months um, it was an audio book actually um, I was a bit lazy listening to it on my travels but um, Shoe Dog by Phil Knight the owner and founder of, of Nike is a phenomenal read slash listen uh, for a business owner you realize that the 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 giant that is uh, Nike that we know had an incredible slow start. He didn't pay himself for something like the first five years. He was employing other people to do the work for him and then, and then you know, working uh, for free. They hit all sorts of product development problems and all that kind of business. And it's, it's actually quite heartening hearing that um, happen in the early days of such a, such a beast that we know now. And there's nothing lazy about going for an audio book. <laughs> nothing at listen, all. Isn't it? It's good to listen. It is good to listen. We're yeah. on a podcast exactly. after all. Uh, okay, the traffic top tip. Which marketing method do you either prize above all others or think doesn't get the press it deserves? Um, my heart says SEO because that's what I've done for years and years and years, but it is a, it is a slow burner uh, in many areas. Um, the biggest thing for me that's, that's enabled us to grow um, and, and people I know to grow has been social advertising. The prices are still so phenomenally low. When you compare it to Google AdWords, for example, they're still so phenomenally low. It's so well targeted. You can you can send out tiny little things to tiny little niches and, and get your data back. So yeah, other people have probably said it, but social media advertising, um, sponsored posts, all that kind of stuff is still excellent. But you have to be aware of the scroll. Um, so many people follow three, 4,000 people on Twitter. You've got to stand out. So be daring and, and go for it. Cool. Okay. The tool top tip there, maybe a collaboration tool, a social media plugin, a phone app, or just a way of working. Is there a cool little tool you use that makes you and your team more efficient from day to day? Nothing replaces talking. Nothing replaces um, one-to-one or one-to-a-group communication. Um, there's obviously big pushes towards um, home working, remote working, all that kind of stuff, and that's cool. But email's wonderful for getting things down in detail, but picking up the phone and going through so much um, in the space of three or four minute conversation is far, far more powerful. Um, I've always been an advocate from running an agency to now running, running a software company. Um, it's always about one-to-one personal communication. Okay, the growth top tip. If you met someone today who's focused on growing their e-commerce business from 100 orders per month to 1,000, what would be your number one tip for them? That was probably obvious. That, that, you know, if, it's, if, uh, if it's not recommending Shop It in itself, it's certainly looking at a multi-channel um, uh, process. My belief is that the majority of the hard work is done when you've bought your products in when you've worked out how much you need to price them, when you've bought all the integration software that you need to do to manage your stock and all that kind of stuff. Um, The easy bit is to get that out to as many people as possible. I'm so glad you said multi-site because there would be a real lack of consistency if you hadn't have said (laughs) multi-site as your growth top tip. Okay, Adam. I thought about it for a long time and I thought, yeah, that, that's the obvious answer. <laughs> uh, consistency is always good in a podcast. Uh, so, Adam, um, before we say goodbye, could you let the listeners know about how Shop It could um, help them do their multi channel, m- fulfill their multi channel dreams, and, um, and where they can find you and Shop It on the web and social media, please? Okay. So, um, so yes, the, 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 the platform's not surprisingly been built around enabling people to grow uh, from day one. Um, we try and be very different. There's not, as well as being the only pay-as-you-grow platform, so that means that you're paying basically for your traffic, you're spending your money on going to acquire customers before you're really paying for your infrastructure. Um, Shop it's been really been built about giving all of the possible features that we ever develop to every customer from day one, and that includes the multi-site, We've got a competitive gateway um, fee that, that is flat for everybody. And it's really helped to help the startup business, the 50 grand a year business, the 100 grand a business scale all the way up to five, 10 million pounds without having to, to migrate to another platform, without having to pay all of the stuff up front, without necessarily have to, having to pay you know huge amounts for custom designs and all that kind of business, really. Um, so that's what, that's what Shop It's about, um, international sales niche demographic sales, all of those kind of things that we've discussed so far. 
Excellent. And where can they find you? So the website is uh, www.shopitcommerce.com. Um, we're on Instagram as I think it's Shop It Cloud, which is kind of our product name. Um, and then we can be found on, on Facebook and, and Twitter and all the other, other kind of channels. Awesome. Thank you, Adam. I think we did a relatively good job of recreating our conversation from IRX. So, And I'm sure we will have inspired some of the listeners to think again about just how many websites they need. Um, so thank you so much for being on the podcast today and for sharing so much great insight with us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Likewise. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me on. So there we go. If you've never thought about having multiple websites, maybe you should. Maybe there's a product niche that is crying out for its own site to help that product get the visibility it deserves and be presented in the way it deserves. Or maybe you've got a slightly different customer demographic that you think would respond well to a website that curates just the products and content they want. Or maybe it's the wholesale side of things or it's going international. There are so many different reasons to go multi-site. I think it's something which uh, which many more of us will be doing in the, coming, in the years to come. To get your hands on the notes from today's show, including the top tips, links and details of related episodes, then head over to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash podcast. If you're enjoying the podcast, then please do share it with your e-commerce friends as we try and reach as many people as possible with every episode because we know how much from your feedback these episodes help, inspire, reassure and help you work out what to do next. So please do share it on Twitter, on Facebook, over a coffee, over a pint, whatever works for you. Now have a great week and keep optimising. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce master plan podcast. Find out more at ecommercemasterplan.com slash podcast.